Since I'm a father, I became more conscious about how I approach the mountains. Less risk-taking and far-sighted while improving my instincts. Speed mountaineering is my way to go. It allows me to move fast. And in order to be fast, I learned that I have to go slow first. Because the finishing time of my targets is the result of my experiences, the choices and the mistakes I made, and much more. Time becomes a different meaning when you are leaving behind all the comfort zone. It is hard in the beginning until it becomes liberating because you are forced to live in that very, very moment. We were flying from Kathmandu to Nepal Gunji, and then from Nepal Gunji to Dunai, and that's really the last airport. I mean, it's not even an airport, it's like it's one road. Yeah, from Dunai, you really start the adventure. experience the Dolpo area, this remote and authentic area. I wanted to get in touch with the locals, I wanted to see how they live, I wanted to really get away from our modern civilization. It's really amazing to go through there, you feel, you feel like 3,000 years ago. Walk all day, then you set up your tent. You go to bed very early because it gets dark at 6.30, then it gets cold and there's not much to do it. Wake up, get your breakfast, pack your stuff, put down the tent, pack everything on the donkeys and the mules, and then you walk yeah, the next really day. Cool. Same procedure. This permanently changing environment and the trekking in was not only great in terms of, of for your mind and for your physics, but also really, really great for your acclimatization because every day it was a couple of meters higher, a couple of meters higher. And I think we all felt better and better after, after every day because we got so used to the altitude. And suddenly we come to Karakot, which is another village. And this is really the, the, the very, very last point where you see any people who are permanently living in that place. There was even a school. So we were very surprised by that, that people are really living there all the time. Always when you see kids, you are reminded of your kids and you think about, wow, how are they, how are they doing? I would love to call every night and so on, but I also try to discipline a little bit myself to also stay with the mind here and not too much in the other world. Because you really get kind of homesick, or at least I get really uh, homesick, and then i rather shut off completely and, and try to keep the worlds separate. We were all the time thinking, where's the, where's the Logiri? Where's, where's Puta? <laughs> where, where is it? And we were walking every day and more, and we already heard, yeah, you only see it very late and late. But suddenly when we reached base camp, and not even when we reached it, you had to go into the base camp and you had to turn around the corner and then suddenly you saw Puta, you know, and this was the really first time when we saw this amazing mountain. Yeah, finally base camp, man. A couple of expeditions, I guess, too. But wonderful spot, I guess. Uh, up there on the ridge, and this is already the summit. It took us nine days to get here. Well done, buddy. Anche gli italiani sono arrivati in campo base, eh? We had a really great team. This was maybe another pillar in the in this entire setup of the Lagiri Seven team of six. But on the other hand, we were three teams of two persons. He 
Sneaky is also in the group, I was the one who decided to go for a speed style. I wanted to start from base camp in a non-stop push up to the summit within eight hours. So eight hours for the total travel up and down. This was my target. And the other guys, I'd rather go from camp two. Doing an exhibition means that you want to reach the summit. You have to find the, the proper way for yourself. Either you, you stay in uh, one of the high camps, which is terrible, but uh, the distance is way shorter. So, I mean, you are basically closer to the summit. Or you stay in base camp, but the distance is very long. From base camp to the summit and back in one shot is just super tough. First day to carry up stuff at uh, camp one. So heavy load and uh, feels like a porter today. What everybody has to do, everybody has to acclimatize. This is a, um, an absolute crucial factor. That means that you push up, up and down all the time and you build up certain campsites and you sleep in high altitude. Yo! That's what we're here for, that's what we're born for. I felt for myself if I tried to kill my, my instincts of adventure, of being an adventurer on, on being out there, then I'm, I'm getting really, really a sad person. And this is not, not good for anybody because first of all, you have to be happy with yourself to somehow spread happiness around you. And that's also part of, of being a father. The risk taking years um, already, were already finished before I got kids. Then suddenly was, I saw the first things happening and so on. And, and the risk taking was really going down. But I also learned, and this is probably almost a Buddhistic, today we had the puja. You can also reduce the risk to, to zero, I mean to almost zero, if you stay in base camp. You always have the option to not go to the summit. I mean, it's, it's always getting, I mean, the most dangerous time is when you push towards the summit, right? And, but that's a tough one because of course you invest a lot of time, you invest a lot of money, you invest a lot of suffering, and then to say, well, it's not, not it. gonna stay for next time, next year, next years. Okay, buddy, uh, I really have to go for a pee. Yeah, if you don't mind. Me <laughs> too. Yeah. <laughs> the first altitude night we had was horrible, but even a little bit better than expected. Fucking cold feet. After the first night, you go back to base camp, you relax a little bit again, and finally we said, okay, now we sleep one more night up in. Today we go up to camp two. We have one last sleep up there, but so far, it's so good. Uh, only today my stomach is really, oh, bad, really bad. Really? Yes. And if something is not good in high altitude, it always means you are, messed up, you're totally bad. Your body is, is fighting all the time, defending itself against all the influences uh, we have about the permanent um, exhaustion, about the permanent uh, cold, about the permanent um, different environment, about the food we are not used to, about, 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 you know, it's a mix of everything. Looks like a Sherpa, eh? Filling a tent. I'm super weak, I'm super slow, I'm, I'm, I'm much slower than the, than the others, even though they went already very slow to acclimatize. Just arrived in camp two, third time. I'm gonna sleep up here. And yeah, and today was a hard day for me, especially because I had a really big stomach problem. But somehow it got better, but I'm not super fit. Okay, it's one night, buddy. One night, we'll survive. Huh? <laughs> I'm really looking forward to get home now. No? Back to the comfort zone, man. I need this night because if I don't have the night, then I'd have probably no chance at all to reach these eight hours. A little bit of body hygiene. Oh, look at the moon. Oh. Good 
Bye, buddy. Still love you. Night. What's the first and last night up here? Can you see from, from breathing? It's crazy, huh? It's totally wet. It was also bad, but my stomach recovered. This was the, the good news, you know, and this also gives you confidence again. I went up a little bit, I pushed myself, I still didn't feel great, of course, but um, this was over. It was really a, a, as quick as it came, um, it also left. When you know tomorrow is going to be the day, then you feel the excitement in your body, you know. You feel the excitement from your brain moving throughout everything and you know suddenly is the day, you know. Suddenly is the, tomorrow is going to be the day where it really starts and you concentrate all your energy and you feel the excitement and I almost waited this time to explode. I was in, in my tent down in base camp before the summit push. Schorsch and uh, Much and Alex were in the tent in Camp 2. Hey, Benny, <laughs> can you hear me? Hey, Alex, yeah, are you okay? Yes, uh, super. So, what time do you think uh, you will start? Uh, we said we need the radio on from 3 o'clock onwards and we see how the wind is, but I guess somewhere between uh, 4 and 5, I think this will be the timing. <laughs> okay, buddy, see you tomorrow. Last night, last night in the fucking high camp. Is it too lonesome? Just come over. Huh? Okay. Whoa. Oh. Look at this, eh? Beautiful view. I think I woke up at 3, 3 o'clock in the morning, and at 4.17, I started. Hey, how are you? Bis dann, bis dann, hau nein. Ciao, bis dann, ciao. We were ready at 4.30, uh, so really ready to, to go. Uh, pretty much at the same time when Benny left the base camp. The night was dark and long. We felt fine so, so far, but not like, wow, now let's, let's go, let's run. It's really like, wow, it, everything, everything is tough. Everything really is, is very exhausting. Camp one, getting undressed. I had no feeling in my fingers and no power in my fingers and I had to somehow get these socks on. And, oh, and I was really, it was crazy to get these socks on. I only left camp one after, I think more than two hours, that's too long. 50 minutes or even more for exchanging is too long. Knowing Benny and knowing that he's one of the few who really performs at an exceptional level at this elevation. So we knew, I mean, if we play it well, we might uh, be on the summit quite at the same time. Starting from Camp 2, I saw these little dots. Okay, this is Schorsch Much. My only goal was now I have to get these little two dots <laughs> and I have to speed up. I always enjoyed and it was always safer for me to take all the energy from base camp and to really have um, a short window to go up and down. You want to make it in eight hours? Have to be faster. You got one of hours left, no? Okay. Okay, buddy. I was on the way up to the summit. They were just coming down from the summit. You know, this is where we met. And I saw that George and Mukti looked very, you know, on one hand happy, on the other hand, very concentrated, exhausted. We met maybe 50 meters below the summit and we, we, we I mean, I knew you're going to make it because he's so close.
fucking car. Yes. Good news. I just reached the summit of the Lagiri 7. About six hours from base camp. Yeah, super! <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> yeah, baby! I ran down the first, I don't know, two, three hundred meters maybe. I put on the skis and the skiing was just horrible. It looks like I just learned skiing. It's just so bad. It's so, so bad. During the descent, I was really only thinking about I have to get back fast, but I couldn't ski fast. I was too exhausted. It costs you a lot of energy skiing down, but it costs you even more energy if you fall. Then I thought, it's gonna be really tight. A fighting in my brain. I remember all the time the fighting in one side said, just fuck it, who cares? You know, if you are down in eight hours or eight and a half, or who, you know, what, who cares? It's only for you. And, and the other side said, hey man, what's wrong with you? You said eight hours, come on, you, come on, do it. You know, hurry up, don't stand here. And I, oh. Sweden, scheiß. Everything feels slow and you know time is ticking. I mean, I really know time is ticking, time is ticking, time is ticking. If it continues this way after Camp 2, I have no chance. friend waiting, um, also in, in, in Camp 2, Michael, um, I just clapped his hands and, and I thought, okay, now you have to, you have to go for it, you know, you have to go for it. down here in exactly seven hours and 53 because I started at four o'clock I started at four o'clock 417 here from base camp <coughs> and I just came back 1210 <laughs> wow how do I look yeah how are you good do I look good yes you look good yeah really really yeah <laughs> yes below eight yeah. hours yeah <laughs> Hello, yeah. <laughs> it's That's nice here. Yeah. Thank you for everything. Life, yeah, life is dangerous and I'm not trying to talk away the risk of mountaineering, not at all. I know that I'm very exposed um, also as a family father and what I'm doing, absolutely. This is um, maybe the price for a very in intense life, um, not only for me, but also for, for the family. In the end, we live only once, and that means both to be very careful about your life. On the other hand, to take the maximum out of this one life. Bringing this into the, into the balance is my personal big challenge, but, but it's getting better, I hope. <laughs>